Hello, Stratomatic and baseball fans. This is me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And I'm here with game two of the 2005 National League Championship Series between the Houston Astros and the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals will be home in this game as they were in real life and the pitching matchup will be the actual game two pitching matchup which was Andy Pettit for Houston who was 17 and 9 with a 239 earned run average during the regular season of 2005 and for the Cardinals it'll be Mark Mulder who was 16 and 8 with a 364 earned run average for the Cardinals in the regular season this is game two if you want to see what happened in game one well <laughs> go watch game one so anyway um, I'm not going to give away who is ahead in the series at the moment but we are going to get underway with the with the game. The lineups are no different than they were in game one. And leading off for the Astros, we're going to get right into this, is going to be Willie Tavares, the center fielder for the Astros, facing Mark Mulder. And he gets a 4-4, which is a catcher card X. And the catcher for the... Uh, um, uh, Cardinals is Yachty, Yadier Molina, and he is a 2, and that is a 12, so we're going to go 12 and 2 on the catcher, and that is a foul out. So there's one away, and uh, Craig Biggio is up, the second baseman, and we have to roll the 20 sider. 1 8 is a single 1 to 13, and it is a single. So Biggio gets a board with a hit. He's a stealing B. He is going to stay right where he is, at least for the moment. And Lance Berkman is up. He gets a 5-6, and that is a strikeout. So there's two down, and that brings Morgan Ensberg to the plate. The third baseman for Houston. In 2005, he had 36 home runs and hit 283. And he gets a 4-6, which is a fly ball to center field. And that is it for Houston in the top of the first. And that brings us to the bottom of the first inning. Uh, a reminder, my innings right here. The logos for the teams and the scores. Their score, their uh, number of runs scored will be up in the corner. Um, and that brings Reggie Sanders to the plate. He is the leadoff hitter for... The Cardinals against Andy Pettit. And that is a 110, which is a fly to center field. So Sanders is out. He, if he could have gotten on, he had some speed. But Larry Walker, Larry Walker is up and he gets a 6 9. And that is a double 1 8. And it's going to be a double. So Larry Walker gets a one out double. And he is at second base for Albert the Machine Pujols who is back with the Cardinals, you might know, and he flies out to center field. That's in real life. He is back with the Cardinals for his last year of baseball. Whoa. And uh, Jim Edmonds, Jimmy Edmonds, who made the greatest catch I have ever seen in my life in center field for the Angels when he was with the Angels. But that's a 4'11", and that is a walk. So the Cardinals have two on with two outs, and their second baseman, yes, their second baseman, Mark Grudzalonic, is at the plate. And he gets a 4-8, and that is a triple 1-3, to three, and that's going to be a single double asterisk. So runners are at the corners, and that is one run for the Cardinals. So we'll put their one run right there. Using Rumacube after the zeros... Roma Cube apparently does not. I don't know a lot about the game, but it doesn't have zeros in it. So um, we have David Eckstein up at the plate, and he gets a 210, and that is going to be a ground ball B. So they're out of the inning, but not before they scored a run and took the lead, and taking and that takes us to the 
top of the second. And as a reminder, in 2005, the Astros had a record of 89 and 73, and the Cardinals won their division with a record of 100 wins and 62 losses. And Jason Lane steps in for the Astros. He gets a 1 9, that's a strikeout, so he's gone quickly. Mulder disposes of him, and then you got Orlando Palmero. He gets a 2-9, and that's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Two down very quickly for the Cardinals here in the second. And Brad Osmus, the catcher, is up, and he gets a 3-12, and that's a fly to right. And he is out. And so that takes us to the bottom of the second inning very quickly. Scotty Rowland. Rowland is up for the Cardinals facing... Andy Pettit, who's still out there. 3-4 is a ground ball to the shortstop. That's one away, and that brings up Molina, the man who had a catcher card reading from the first inning. And is surprisingly a two in this particular year, but he gets a single. So he's aboard with one down and Mulder at the plate. They're just going to let Mulder hit. You know me, I don't like sacrificing. And that's going to be a 6-3, which is a fly to left field. And uh, we have to check the, we have to do a left fielder check on that. And that is Orlando Palmero, who is a 3 in left field. And that is a 4. That's going to be bigness. That is going to be a safe at second on error. So Palmero makes an error, and the Cardinals, again, are in a commanding position with runners at second and third with uh, no nobody out. I don't think they have anybody out because Molina didn't. Molina, no, they do. They have one out. Roland started off with an out. So Reggie Sanders is up at the plate. The uh, Astros will play the infield back. I don't like playing the infield in. 4-7 is a ground ball to the second baseman. He is a, I believe he's a four. Yes, he is a four. And that is a roll of six. That's probably going to be something. Six and four is a single one. So another run comes in for the Cardinals. And they still only have one out. And a two-nothing lead now. With Larry Walker. Larry Walker up at the plate. And he gets a 1-5, which is a strikeout. So he's, that's a key strikeout right there for Pettit. And Pujols is up the machine. And the machine gets a 2-4, which is a ground ball to the pitcher, and he's out. So the Cardinals did sneak another run across the plate there in the second inning. And we go to the top of the third. Top of the third inning, and Adam Everett, the shortstop for the Astros, is up. Very good defensive shortstop. Not much on hitting, but he does walk. So he gets a board, and you've got Pettit up. They're going to sacrifice his Pettit. That's a six. He, it's the sacrifice is successful. He moves Everett to second with only one down. And Wally Tavares, Willie Tavares... Gets a 2-3, and that's a ground ball shortstop. That's two away. And up to the plate in a key situation where the runner at second is Craig Biggio. And he allowed a run to come across last inning. That's a 6-9, and that is going to be a home run 1-8 to eight or a double, and it is a double. So that knocks in a run, and that is Houston's first run of the day. So it's 2-1, to one and a key hit by Biggio right there to make up for the error that he had in Lance Berkman. And he gets a 2-6, and that is a pop-out to third. So they only score one run, and we go to the bottom of the third inning. We're moving right along here, but it is a close game, too. Of course, game one was a very close game for most of the game. Probably really all of the game. Jim Edmonds is up. He gets a 2-4, and that's a fly ball to center. 
one away for the Cardinals. And Mark Grudzelanek, the second baseman, he's up. He gets a 1-3. That's a ground ball to second, two away. As Biggio throws it over and makes the play. And David Eckstein gets a 4-5. And that is a ground ball to the second baseman. The second baseman, uh, Biggio, was busy that inning. But no runs come across. We go to the top of the fourth with... The Astros coming to the plate down by a run with Morgan Ensberg up at the plate. And he gets a 3-5, which is a strikeout. One out for Houston. And Jason Lane at the plate. He gets a 4-6, and that is a fly ball to center field. Both pitchers excellent. And uh, this is a bit of a pitcher's duel, as was game one. And Orlando Palmero comes to the plate. He gets a 5-10. That is a fly to center. That's going to be, I'm sure, Mr. Edmonds. And he is a 1. And that's an 8, probably an out. But we're going to just check it for sanity. Um, and it is. So, no runs come in there. We go to the bottom of the fourth with the Cardinals coming to the plate. They still have the lead, a slim lead, 2-1. to one. And Scotty Rowland up at the plate. They're trying to bust this open, but it's hard against Pettit. And that's a 3-6, which is a ground ball to the shortstop. Everett, who throws him out, uh, throws over to Berkman, and that gets the first out. Yadier Molina is up. He gets a 6-10. That's a fly to center. That is going to be... who? That is going to be... Um, I think that's Tavares. And he is a 2. And that's a 12. Probably an out. And it is. And with 2 down, the pitcher is up. That is, of course... Um, uh, Mark Mulder. And he gets a 5-4, and that is a catcher card. And the catcher is Osmus, who is a 1, and that's a 2 at catcher. 2 and 1 is a safe at first on air dribbler. So Mulder is on by the second, he's on the second time in this game by an error both times, once by the left fielder and now once by the catcher. And that brings Reggie Sanders up. And he gets a 5-9, which is a strikeout. So the Cardinals, despite the uh, error by Osmus, do not score. And they maintain a slim 2-1 to lead as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Top of the fifth, Osmus is up, the man who made the error. And as you recall, when Orlando Palmero, I thought when Orlando Palmero made the error, he came up the next, no. No, it was Biggio who made an error, who came up the inning after, the half inning after he made an error. But Osmus is up, and that is a 5-7, which is a walk. Oh, wait a minute. No, 5-7. I'm looking at the wrong thing. That is a single. That's even better for him. He gets a hit, and he is aboard with Adam Everett, the shortstop up. And he gets a 2-5, which is a strikeout. So there's one down with the pitcher up. That is Pettit with a man at first base. They're still going to just let him hit. They're not going to sacrifice him over because then there's two outs. you got to hope for the pitcher's card. It's a 5-10. That's a fly ball to center. That is a 1 in Edmonds, and it is an out. So there's two down, and up steps Willie Tavares. Willie Tavares gets a 2-7, which is a single. And they're just going to hold the runner. They're not going to try to do anything fancy with that. And Craig Biggio at the plate. Craig Biggio, of course, he had 26 home runs in 2005. So let's see if he can get one here. 1-7, no. It's a pop-out to second base. He is out. And the Astros go rather quickly. Well, not really rather quickly, but they do go down. And they didn't score any runs. 
And we are now in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Cardinals coming to the plate with Larry, Larry Walker, Larry Walker. Let's straighten that up. Man, he gets a 2-6, which is a double one or a single. It is a single. So he's aboard with a hit. Pettit may be tiring out there. Albert Pujols, the machine, gets a 3-4, and that's going to be a shortstop double play ground ball. Two down, and up steps Jimmy Edmonds. And Jim Edmonds gets a 4-11, and that is a walk. So now Edmonds is aboard, but with two down, regardless of his speed, and really he was a C stealing, so they're not going to do that anyway. Grudzelanek up at the plate, and that's a 3-7, which is a single. Now they have runners at first and second. They're not going to try to extend that single again, just like Houston did not the inning before. The game is too tight. You don't want to be thrown out at third as the third out of the inning, and David X coming up. And he gets a 4-5, which is a ground ball to the second baseman. And just like happened to Houston, the uh, Cardinals cannot capitalize on that. We go to the top of the sixth. Top of the sixth, 2-1 to one, St. Louis. This game, um, as Red Barber would say, is tighter than a new pair of shoes on a rainy day. And Lance Bertman is coming up to the plate. And that is a 1-3, which is a ground ball, a plus injury, and that's a 2, though. So he's only temporarily injured and stays in the game. That's one down. Morgan Ensberg gets a 6-6, six, six, and that is going to be a walk. So Morgan Ensberg is bored with one down. And Jason Lena. And Jason Lane gets a 1-5, which is a strikeout. So he goes down. There's two away. And Houston has a man at first base with Orlando Palmero. Up. And he gets a 5-6, which is a walk. So now Houston has two men on. And Brad Osmus is up. And he gets a 3-5, and that's going to be a fly ball to center. Houston is retired right there and so now we go to the uh, bottom of the sixth with the Cardinals at the plate in the form of Scott Rowland to lead it off the third baseman the gold glove all-star should be in the Hall of Fame third baseman and he gets a 6-9 which is a double one to eight and it is actually a single so he is aboard with a hit. And Yachty up. Yachty Molina. And he gets a 3-9. And that's going to be a pop-out plus injury. And he gets a 2 as well. So he is only temporarily injured and remains in the game. And I think that that's only one out. Yes, it is. The pitcher is up, Mulder, and they're not taking him out now, so they're going to let him hit with one out. And that is a 6-3, and that's a fly to left. Mulder lifts it up in the air. Remember, he's been on twice by an air, and that is a three. Yes, that's going to happen again. It's a double. Well, this time it's a double. He hits a double um, or Orlando Palmero's way. They're going to hold the runner up. And incredibly, Mulder has been on three times, twice by an air, once by a double. And Reggie Sanders is up. And he gets a 6-10. And that is going to be a fly to center. The center fielder is a 2. That is a 1. So let's see. 1 and 2. That's an out 4. Out 4 is runner's hold. So 2 away. Tavares makes the play. And that leaves it up to Larry Walker. Larry Walker. And he gets a 4-6, and that is a strikeout. So they came close to scoring, St. Louis did, but they couldn't quite get that run uh, across. And we are going to the top of the seventh in a 2-1 to -one game that St. Louis is just barely uh, uh, leading in. And Adam Everett is up the shortstop for the Astros. 
And he gets a 1-7, which is a fly ball left field. One away. And is everybody ready for opening day? I am more than ready for opening day in real life. Um, here is the pitcher coming up, Andy Pettit. They are going to pinch hit for um, Pettit right here, I think. That's about what they should be doing, I would think, right now. So... They're going to have Dan Wheeler up in the bullpen, so you got action out in the Houston pen with Dan Wheeler, but let's see who the pinch hitter is going to be. It's going to be Mike Lamb right now. Mike Lamb up, and he gets a 4-10, and that's going to be a ground ball to the shortstop. The shortstop for... St. Louis is offhand. I don't know. It is Eckstein. He's a three. That is a 14 and a three. That might be something. And it is going to be a two base error. So Lamb gets a board. And Willie Tavares is up with uh, only one down. I think. Is that right? One down. Everett. Yep. And he gets a five six. And that's going to be a strikeout. He's Tavares strikes out at the hands of Mulder. And now Craig Biggio is up. And that's a 112, which is a fly ball to right field. And he is out. And that is going to be it for Houston. They will bring in Dan Wheeler, who is a batting one. So we are going to use the batting one card, which was... Which was there anyway, because that's what I believe Pettit was. And Houston is up in the bottom of the seventh, and uh, or um, the sorry, the uh, Cardinals are up in the bottom of the seventh with Albert the Machine Pujols, who is back with the Cardinals, as I said earlier. And he gets a 3-7, which is a walk. So he is aboard. No outs. Dan Wheeler walks the first man he faces, although it is Pujols. Good choice. Edmonds up. Edmonds, though, gets a 5-6, which is a strikeout. One away. In 2005, Dan Wheeler was 2-3 with a 221 earned run average and struck out 68 men. 69 men in 73 innings. Grud Zalonic is up. He gets a 5-7. That's a double 1-10 to 10 or a single, and it is going to be a double. They aren't going to send Pujols, though. They're going to hold him up with only one out and David Eckstein up. And he gets a 1-6, which is a single, and drives in uh, another run. So there's going to be, runners are now at the corners, and St. Louis has a third run across the plate with one just 90 feet away waiting to score with rolling up. And Dan Wheeler just really threw gasoline on the fire. Rolling gets a 2-7, that's a fly ball left field B that does score the run, and it's two outs, and that is going to be the fourth run for the Cardinals, and now... The Cardinals have opened this up a little bit, and it is four to one um, with Yadi Molina up. And we're going to have to roll the other one. That is a three nine. That's a pop out plus injury, but it's a one. Three potential injuries in this game, and all were just temporary injuries, and they all remain in the game. And, uh, but they did score four runs there. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Now the, uh, or we go to the top of the eighth. And now the Cardinals really have, or the uh, Astros have their work cut out for them with Lance Berkman up at the plate. Mulder's still going. I mean, if he is pitching this lights out and getting on every time he's up, why not? Lance Berkman is up. He gets a 2-9 and that's a strikeout. I mean, they have not really solved Mulder. They did get a run off of him, but they had to go through a lot of work just to get that. Morgan Enberg, 6'4". That is going to be a fly ball center field. 
two down and Jason Lane up. And that is a 1-6, and that's a ground ball to the third baseman. He's out. And uh, we go to the bottom of the eighth. And now the question is, do you stick with Mulder because he's leading off here, but they are going to do that. He's pitched um, magnificently, and he doesn't seem to be tiring against this Houston attack. So they're going to let him hit. And he gets a 1-8, which is a strikeout. That's the first time he's gotten out in this game. Reggie Sanders is up. He gets a 111, which is a ground to the third baseman. Two away. Wheeler is pitching much better this inning than he was when he came in in the seventh. And Larry Walker is up. And he gets a 1 9, and that is a strikeout. And Wheeler struck out the side. So that was impressive. Uh, but we're in the top of the ninth now, and the Cardinals have to score three runs right here, or game two will be in the books. And it will be a St. Louis victory in the books. Orlando Palmero. 6-7. That is a ground ball to the second baseman. I believe that's Grudzelonic. And he is a 2. Uh, and that's good. that's still going to be a base hit though. So that is a base hit. A man aboard. Osmus up at the plate. There's no activity in the St. Louis pen. And that's a 6-4, which is a fly ball to center. One away. Adam Everett is up. That is a 1-4. That is a ground ball B. And with the pitcher spot Wheeler up again, they are going to pinch hit once again. They have got to find a pinch hitter that will be suitable. And the pinch hitter is going to be Jeff Bagwell. Jeff Bagwell pinch hitting. If you're wondering why he isn't starting, it's because in 2005 he only had 100 at bats. He may actually have played in the NLCS, but he isn't playing in this one. And uh, that is a 5 9, and that's going to be a fly ball to right field, and that is the game. Put it in the books. The Cardinals win game two by the score of 4 to 1, and that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z. Bob Zolke signing off.